Honor Club, where honor is real. Hey, welcome everyone to this very special Ring of Honor YouTube exclusive. I'm Ian Riccoboni. I am the commentator with Ring of Honor. And today I'm joined by ROH senior official Todd Sinclair. Hello, hello. And Todd, we are here today to relive one of the greatest matches, not only in Ring of Honor history, but maybe in professional wrestling history. We're gonna go all the way back to October 1st, 2005, when Samoa Joe took on Kenta Kabashi. Yeah, I'm excited. I haven't watched this in a long time. It, it's gotta be over 10 years since I've watched this match, so I'm excited to see it. And, and you have an incredible perspective. You were right there in the ring. So we're talking to the, the third man in the ring. Uh, and this match over the years has, has grown in lore, grown in stature. Uh, I've recently watched it. You can you can watch this entire match on Ring of Honor's YouTube. Uh, you're going to want to go on the YouTube page and check out three brutal Samoa Joe matches in ROH. That was part of the 18th anniversary collection. And it kicks things off on there. But, but today, I'm so glad. I'm excited, Todd, to talk to you about your experience in the ring. Oh, wow. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> so without any further ado... Let's get into it, Todd. Let's get down to business and take a look. 2005 Samoa Joe versus Kenta Kabashi. Interesting to note about this match, Todd. This match was not released with commentary. You see there, Kenta Kabashi. Whoa. <laughs> quick, story, Your introduction. quick story about that. I actually asked Bobby Cruz to announce me, and I, I'm mad that I did, because I've never done that before, I'll never do it again. Joe only getting two streamers there, that's a little unusual. Ah, uh, well, maybe not. Maybe for uh, 2005, I don't even remember when streamers, how big streamers were. I think we're about to see in a minute, though. <laughs> I've, uh, yeah, yeah, right. I've skipped ahead. <laughs> Cruz with the, the reversal of the name, Japanese style. Bob, Fall River's Bobby Cruz, by the way. Oh, is that where Brutal Bob's from? I think it is. I think they live near each other. <laughs> They're neighbors. That. That's cool. So at various points through this video, I think the action speaks for itself. I think the crowd speaks for itself. Everybody's on their feet right now, Todd. Uh, there's something magical about the presence of Kenta Kabashi. As you're cleaning, cleaning up the streamers, handing up to Mary Kate Anthony, the photographer at ringside. Yeah. Oh wow, checking the tights too. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> we have I haven't done that in a long time, just because it's whoever brings something in their tights. It's just to me, it was always useless. So well, I stopped doing it at some point. Well, now you've given the, a free a free ride to anybody that might choose to. Iconic image yeah. there, code of honor right here too. And there's the bell. Almost everybody on their feet in the back there. We're in New York City. We're at the New Yorker Hotel. Yeah, right next to the right next to the uh, Manhattan Center. This was on, I think, the second floor of the New Yorker. And, and when was the first time? What was it like meeting Kobashi? That was, you know what? I didn't meet. Kobashi until like five or ten minutes before the match. It was really like he changed, I think, because he, he had a room in the hotel. He changed in that in that hotel room and came down for the match. So I didn't meet him until we right right before we went out there. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's a paint, bit of a paintbrush there. Yeah. And that seems to have awoken Kenta Kabashi. It, was there any worry about language barrier? To this point, Ring of Honor, I, I mean, Sumi Sakai had wrestled for Ring of Honor. Uh, Great Muda at Final Battle 2003. Kikataro was in 2005. And not too, too many Japanese stars. 
just want to. Oh. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Uh, to answer your question, yeah, I was actually kind of worried. Uh, because, not worried, but like what happens if I need to communicate? And I didn't know the amount of English that Kobashi knew. Um, so, yeah, it, it was always in the back of my head of, you know, the language barrier for any of you guys that came in from NOAA or Dragon Gate or, or New Japan. Beautiful northern lights. Kabashi down. <laughs> There's like two bulls. <laughs> oh my god. You know, I think sometimes we, we forget just how good of an athlete Samoa Joe is. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think anyone gets that. Like, he's amazing. It's, he, he does it every time. And this atmosphere is just is unreal. I. It, it, it really is crazy. I, it, like, I'm, I got goosebumps right now. It's crazy because, like, there was nothing like it that I had ever experienced this on this night because everybody was so hyped for this match just going in. Like you, like you saw, nobody's sat down since the beginning of the match, and we're already how many three or four minutes in. Oh, Jay Lethal in the background. There he is. Yeah, nice cameo from Jay Lethal. It, so, Kabashi, how much did you know about him at this point? I mean, by now, he had left all Japan, broke off, and, and helped really get Noah up and running. He was the Triple Crown Champion by the time he had left. Yeah, I I didn't know a ton. I, uh, I wasn't a big tape trader. And this is, you know, people who are li listening to this and watching this with us, 2005, YouTube wasn't a thing. I don't think. I, I'm pretty sure YouTube wasn't a thing. So, to watch any of these matches, you had to seek them out. So I had seen a little bit of, of stuff from a friend of mine who was a big tape trader, but his friend, my, my friend Muck used to get all kinds of stuff. Uh, but I didn't have a ton of, of knowledge, at least first-hand knowledge, of, of many of the guys like Kenta Kobashi or Misawa, um, just here and there a little bit. By this point, Joe was was one of the, uh, the fan favorites in Ring of Honor. You know, even when he was a you know more of a villain, um, you know, I think he'd earned the respect of the Ring of Honor fans. And some of these chops, I don't know if that's a great idea because <laughs> even if you've yeah, not right? seen a lot of Kabashi matches, yeah, if you've done any scouting, you know <laughs> the last thing you want to do is get into a chop fest with him. <laughs> Did, did you talk to Joe at all after the match? <laughs> and ask I, I did, and I, I don't know if there's any pictures, but his chest after this match, I remember backstage, uh, he was sitting in a chair, and he was just wiped out. Just He, he gave every ounce of, that, of energy that he had for this match. He was wiped out, and his chest was like just raw beef, like just, just torn apart. Uh, I, like, I remember that in my head, the scene of Joe just kind of like sitting in that chair backstage. And you had known Joe for, Joe for a while, right? I mean, he was, uh, what was your relationship with Joe? Yeah, um, I came in to Ring of Honor. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those kicks. Yeah, right? Almost no effect. His hands are huge. What do you do? I know. Oh man. I guess I guess just instinct, just fight. <laughs> like Joe's yeah, doing. Right? Yeah. So so I was saying uh, I came in Ring of Honor about a year into Joe's title. Um, I started doing the pre-show matches in in November of '03, and then I didn't start doing the main shows until February, the second anniversary. So I started wrestling for Joe the first time was the cage match with Jay Briscoe and at our best. And uh, he helped me like crazy, giving me the opportunities to ref his matches, but also feedback after every match too. Giving him all kind, you know, like giving me all kinds of feedback and, and, and things that I could learn. Uh, like it was amazing to be able to be in the ring for Joe's matches at that point because his title reign was so good 
and then after the title reign, he just continued on. But I was lucky to be a part of it. And here's one of the, the more iconic moments of the match when things go to the outside. Yeah, and I will say, can I say something? And I hope people from Ring of Honor are listening to this. There's no count out in Ring of Honor at this point. I loved it. I don't like count outs. I, I like to let the wrestlers do their thing. And if I need to get them in the ring somehow, I will. But there, you'll notice there's no count here because there was no count outs at the time. And I wish we would go back to that. Do you remember about when the count out was instituted? Um, I, I actually don't know. I want to say it might have been when Gabe Sapolsky left and you know, Adam Pierce came in. It might have been around that time, whatever the time frame is. But also, at this time, I don't know if this is at this point, but the Pure Championship was big around this time. And that did have a 20 count on the floor. So it was different than the regular matches that we had. Now, the, the thing that I was blown away when I when I came to Ring of Honor was was the atmosphere. This is on a different level. I mean, we've done that. We were in Madison Square Garden, where there's nearly twenty thousand people. We've done, you know, we've we've been part of events where there's been seven thousand in New Orleans. Uh, this is. You could feel this when you're watching it. This translates 15 years later. Yeah, right? And it's such a, like, it's a one-level move. Like, so the people that are standing in the front row, everybody's going to stand otherwise, but there was no reason to sit down for this match. At any point did you feel like this might be a, a turning point or a moment in Ring of Honor history while you were in the match? It, it, was there any feeling that uh, this could lead to a, a bigger profile or even, you know, less than a year and a half later, Ring of Honor's in Japan with Noah? Yeah, um, this was important, I think, because this was the beginning of the, the ROH Noah relationship. There, was, there wasn't a relationship, I don't think, before this match. This was the first one. And, uh, you know, you as far as becoming business partners, there's still a feeling out process. So we just, I just wanted, for me anyway, I felt like let's do the best we can to show Noah that we're someone that they want to work with. And I think this match did it. Uh, I, I got a funny story with the Noah, uh, the people from Noah on this day, because I had met them for the first time. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. And look at the way, just look at the way that he, he commands the attention and the respect of the, of, of the crowd. Yeah, right? Nice. Simple moves. You know, there's a difference though when Kent Takabashi does it than when, you know, Dino Bravo would have done it. You know, yeah, right. Yeah. At least in the Dino oh, Bravo I'm familiar with from the WWF. Yeah, to go back to my story, um, I met with the NOAA officials earlier in the day, and there, there was a, a man, Ken Hariyama, who was the translator, who's really, he's really nice, and then uh, Rue from NOAA, who was an insanely nice man too. So I, they pulled me aside and just wanted to make sure that, you know, how things were going, my credentials and, and what was going on, but they checked with me, I would say about 10 times during the night before this match happened, kind of to get a feel that the fix wasn't in. Like, I wasn't on, that I wasn't on the take, you know what I mean? That I was going to cut it, call it right down the middle. Um, because, like I said, there was this was the beginning of a business relationship. Uh, but yeah, they, they asked me a lot of times to get that feeling that I was on the up and up. Like, you know, things, things were going to be all right. And look at oh. this. This exchange is, is something else. <laughs> My favorite, <laughs> the sweat, just the sweat popping. Yeah, right? At any point, did you get lost in just watching, watching them? Oh, be the whole match, the whole match. <laughs> I mean, it really like 
for me for the in during this one when it was time for me to count or time for me to, to break a hold in the ropes like it was just instinct at this point because I, I was I was and I get that with most matches I ref like I'm lucky to be the closest person than anyone else to be watching this but I'm still a fan I, I think the closest I've ever I mean there's only been a handful of occasions it's almost like um, I don't know if you feel this as a referee but it's almost like an out of body experience there were times when, when Colt and I would notice that we weren't talking um, Mark, Matt Taylor no, versus right. Mark Haskins was one of those matches for us where yeah. we probably went 30 seconds without saying a word um, you know just uh, Dalton versus Cody when Dalton won the championship um, you just kind of lose yourself yeah that's I, I, I totally get that that's awesome to know that you guys do that because because your job is to speak so right. it's amazing to hear you don't even know you're talking you're not talking have you ever uh, have you ever gotten so into a match that you've um, you just kind of just kind of lost yourself and, and not made a count or as you see um not I, I don't think as much, as far as being being so emotionally into it that I forget that I'm refereeing uh, but there are times Colt can probably tell you this too Cabana some of his covers are so unique that sometimes I don't even know he's pinning the guy mm. so there are a couple times like that but yeah no not not as far as being so far into it that I just forgot to count and, and totally do my job another guy like that is uh, New Japan Shingo and he was a part of the early relationships with, uh, with Dragon Gate and uh, Carrie and I go a lot into Dragon Gate and Noah and uh, finding the right business relationship on Last Stop Penn Station. And we talk a lot about the first tour of Japan. <laughs> I, that is a unique shot right between the eyes. Yeah, yeah, it sure was. <laughs> Up there, see if, I don't know if it, you can see the balcony. Of course, people can see it. It's right there. Oh man! Ooh. How are they moving this fast? Wow! Yeah, right. Jeez, that was cool. I was gonna say up in that balcony. That up that balcony is our dressing room for the night. That's where we all changed. Really, and and I assume I assume it was a locker room sellout. I mean, they, obviously you were in the ring, so you wouldn't know. But yeah. I don't know, but it looks like there's a lot of people watching on that balcony. I'm sure everybody was checking it out. I saw some longtime Ring of Honor fans. I saw Greg H., I believe. I saw definitely Mary Kay and Anthony, one of the original photographers for Ring of Honor, now a, an ardent fan supporter. Looks like some, maybe some uh, Japanese press as well. I see the credentials. And and this is... Oh, man. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff that Joe... I mean, he goes deep into these matches. He's still able to throw a 300-pound man, nearly 300 pounds, into a buckle bomb. It's, it's crazy. Right, and I don't, I don't remember... I mean, I don't, I don't remember Joe ever doing that move. Like, and he just did it with, by twisting the guy. And do, and no, this, that, like you said, he's a 300-pound man. Twisted Kobashi, it's like, holy crap. What was Joe like? I, like on... <laughs> I love those. I was a big fan of that. Yeah. What was he like on this day? Was he nervous? Was he calm? Uh, yeah, no, he was, I mean, I don't know if he was nervous, but he was definitely in a zone the whole day. Like, he was just kind of, you know, I think just full full of concentration and just, just getting ready for the night. Oh, Muscle Buster. Nailed it. That just beautiful. And that's got to be one of the first people to kick out of the Muscle Buster, right? Yeah, right? I and mean, so. Aries, Aries snuck up on him. I don't I don't remember if he kicked out or not of the Muscle Buster, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't remember either. I love that counter. Kobashi is... is physical and as violent as he is he also has some unique ways of getting in and out of maneuvers jesus we are 18 plus minutes into this match and joe has found like a, a seventh gear he's not even in fifth gear <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have it on either look he's blocking it oh no 
can't get, it, can't get it all. Yeah, that, that wrist control. And he has to go has to go at the jawline instead of under the jaw because the way the positioning is of Kobashi, that's a, a great strategy. And the higher that is up on the head, the less leverage Joe has and the more power and torque from the neck Kobashi would have. Switch it up. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know if I should ask you this. Is this is this your favorite Joe match that you ref? Or yeah, this... ab absolutely. Yeah. yeah, this is my favorite Joe match, and this is this is to me this is a top three match of, of all the matches I've ever ref. Yeah, we we don't have too many just just wars in Ring of Honor, and these two guys are just they're just going at it. They're just throwing bomb after bomb at one another. Yeah, well, I mean, look at the sweat just dripping off. his breath as we are here. I'm not even commentating this tonight. And I've seen this match, I've watched this match probably ten times. And I know exactly what's coming. And it's still it's still captivating. Yep. Oh man. Again it's incredible. It you talk about right place, right time. For those that don't know, Kenta Kobashi would, would be diagnosed with cancer not too long after this, maybe a year, year and a half, uh, if I'm recalling correctly. So th there was a very small window where this match could conceivably happen. And I don't know that that gets enough recognition or respect either. You see Jay Lethal again on the outside. So for the stars to line up like this, I mean, this is, that's incredible in its own right. You talked about the referees wondering if the fix was in. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's that's some of the, you know, the, the international, you know, you want to make sure your stars, your big stars, it's like boxing. You, you Sometimes you, you put your champ against a tomato, but when you have two of the best, it's, it's difficult to know who's going to win. <laughs> Man, that's awesome. <laughs> I love that the left arm. <laughs> Look at this. I love that the left arm goes too. But man, how's he? How's he doing it? <laughs> My left arm, I think, would be more tired than my right arm. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, oh, man, I remember those shots. These... Oh, my God. That would probably send me to the hospital. And look at that. You, yeah, look, the, look at Joe, yeah. The blood vessel is already popping. And that's something that usually takes about 24 hours to do. I mean, you could pop the blood vessels, but they don't usually look like that until a, a good day later. Go for another one. Oh, Oof. man. They don't get easier <laughs> the longer the match yeah, goes right? either. <laughs> yeah, hand on the ropes. You ever secretly nervous you're going to miss something like that? <laughs> oh, absolutely. And, and, and uh, you know, it's one of those things where it's my job to kind of be in position properly to be able to see the ropes and sometimes I'm not sometimes I'm I just not 100% in the right position but yeah it's you can get nerve wracking for sure you know in the pantheon of things we talked about how, how this match is, is kind of a, a catalyst for I would argue almost everything that happened in Ring of Honor. I mean, between the, the higher exposure 
I, that this match garnered, and then, oh, <laughs> Jesus. And then the tours of Japan, too. <laughs> Barely. Yeah we, yeah, we went to Japan. I don't even know the years, but, like, we did a couple tours with Noah and Dragon Gate combo Ring of Honor shows. Um, shortly after this, you know, maybe... Yeah. I don't even know the years. I'm bad with years. That's okay. Oh. It wasn't long after this. 07 and 08. Okay. And, uh... Oh. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, man. And both these guys got some nerve. <laughs> I, I remember these spinning chops. Oh, my God. I broke his eardrum with that one. Oh. Wow. Man, that was excellent. That was amazing. Oh, I, I, I just, I mean, I haven't, like I said, I haven't seen this match in so long, but just the feel I get right now just watching that was amazing. Yeah, there's something special. I mean, I was a, I was a freshman in college. Uh, I was right, I was actually 30 blocks down the road, 20 blocks down the road at NYU. Uh, I had seen this advertised, and I, I chose not to go. And... I still regret it. I mean, yeah, I was gonna say, I'm where, sure you regret that for sure. Yeah, this was something that I knew was happening, and I knew I could get to. And you know, hindsight being 2020, I absolutely would have done that different. But uh, what did Samoa Joe mean to the, the career of Jay Lethal? Oh, it was huge. She was a mentor, 100. percent so that was yeah. in and out, outside the ring. It wasn't just uh, an on-screen thing. Yeah, right. And 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 Joe, like Lethal, I, I don't know the age of, of Lethal around this time, but he's probably 19, 20 years old. You know, uh, to be able to learn under Joe at this point in his career had to be huge for him. And this, I mean, we know that Joe had had already been the Ring of Honor World Champion, but Joe would want so much more. Uh, including, you know, uh, big time programs in Impact Wrestling, and then coming back to Ring of Honor, and then NXT, WWE. I mean, he was already on his way. I think this cemented the, the star and the legacy of Samoa Joe. But this is why you can't take stars being on the top of the building for granted. I mean, this. Joe wouldn't be with Ring of Honor too much longer until he returned in, in 2015. And Kenta Kabashi, first and only, right? First and only appearance in Ring of Honor? Yeah, he did. He, it was just this weekend. He did one other show, I think, the next night in Philly. I think there was a tag match. I don't know what it was. I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't think Kabashi was in again. And it really speaks to how special some of these Ring of Honor events and why you need to be there live and why I still regret 15 years later not being at this event. Todd, this has That's been really cool. fun going down memory lane. I hope the fans have enjoyed it. And it's something, again, I think it speaks to Ring of Honor's history and where we've been and, and where we're going because we still bring the best wrestlers from all over the world, from New Japan, from CMLL, and the best up-and-coming stars from right here in America. And, uh, you know, I know that as the video concludes here, this, uh, you know, we've, we've had our share of magic moments and I know there's more to come. Yeah, I mean, we're lucky to do what we do. And uh, right now we're not doing it just for on pause, but I can't wait to get back in the ring. And uh, thanks for leading me through this, Ian, because uh, <laughs> I, I don't like speaking on camera. It's, I'm not a fan of it. You can probably tell I'm flush and my face is all red. Uh, but, you know, thank you, and I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope I added a little to, to it. And if if anything, I hope you just saw the joy on my face of, of watching this back, how much I enjoyed it. Because this is a huge part of my life. Like, this is one of the most important nights of my life to be in the ring with those two guys. And uh, it, was a, it was a pleasure to watch it again. And, and, and thanks to everybody who, who just checked this out with us. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, Todd. And I hope this is the first of uh, of a few we're doing. I know we're talking about reliving some of the more some more great Ring of Honor moments, but uh, it's been a pleasure to to walk back through uh, memory lane with you. 
And for more great Ring of Honor content, keep it here, youtube.com slash Ring of Honor. For Todd Sinclair, I'm Ian Riccoboni. Happy wrestling, everybody. Hopefully, we'll see you soon live. But in the meantime, keep catching up with Ring of Honor and our classic moments right here on the Ring of Honor YouTube channel. Thanks, everybody.